Welcome everybody. Today is a big day. We're going to be building a, you can think of it as like an on, online store. Um, it's going to have products and we are going to be able to put products in a shopping cart and purchase them. But, uh, you know, that might not sound so cool in itself. However, we're going to be learning about some very cool pieces of C++, very important pieces of C++ uh, that are pointers and vectors. So, before we start building, I want to just cover very quickly what those are. So, we've dealt with pointers a little bit, and just to remind you, what they are is they are variables that point to an address. So, I have a very simple example here that we will try to flesh this out so you can understand. In our previous assignments, you know, we've just dealt with simple variables. For instance, we have here an integer some num that holds the number 46. And then what I've done here is I've created a pointer, some pointer, and I've pointed it to the address of some num. So, some num on the computer, like on the physical computer in memory, it has a spot. I don't know what that spot is. Off the top of my head, the computer does, but let's just say that spot is spot 5. So we'll say the address, we'll just make it super simple here. So we'll say there's addresses, and there's address 0, there's address 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so some pointer, when we assign it to the address of some num, what it's going to be holding is address 5. That's all some pointer holds. That's all it has within it. If you were to look in memory at some pointer, what you would see is the address of some number. So it wouldn't be the number 46, it would be the address for some num. And then if you went to that address of some num, if you went to address 5 and looked inside of it, that is where you'd see 46. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Again, pointers don't actually hold any data other than an address of something that actually does hold the data. So as an example down here, again I've, I've assigned it here, but I wanted to print these out to show you a little bit more about the difference between addresses and values. So here's how we would access the address of some number, some num, with this ampersand symbol, this and symbol that denotes address. So when we say this, we're printing out the address of some num. And again, some pointer, what it holds, it holds the address of some num, as we see up here. That's what I assigned, some pointer to some num. So when we print this out, the same thing is going to print out, the address for some num. And down here, this first line, when we're printing out the value, this is something you've seen in pretty much every project that we've worked on from the beginning. So we just had some num, we assigned it the number 46, and we're just going to print that out. So that's this line here. We're just going to print out 46. Now this next line, we're using the pointer to print out that 46, and we're using a special operator, this asterisk, this star, this is called the dereference operator. So if we were to remove this, it would be the same as the one up here. It would print out the address, but we don't want to print out the address that's there. We want to print out the content of that address. So we use this star here. So what this does is it goes, it goes to some pointer first, and some pointer is pointing to some num, and we're saying, give us what is ever in that address that you're pointing to. So this is going to give us the content of some num. So it's going to print out 46. So these two things on the top are going to print out the same thing. They're both going to print out the address of some num. And these two things here on the bottom are both going to print out the contents of some num. So let's go ahead and build and run it just so you can see. So again, we have the address of some num, and this is a large hexadecimal value that just represents a spot in memory on the computer. And again, I accessed it two different ways just to show you. 
kind of what a pointer is doing. So if we ever want to show the address of any space on the computer, we use that ampersand symbol. So we wanted to find the spot on the computer where some num was. So we did that with the ampersand. And then some pointer, the contents of some pointer is this address right here. So they both printed out the same thing, as you can see. And then below, as always, we just have that uh, simple sum num, and we're just printing that out to screen. And so too, we do the same thing with the pointer, but we use the dereference symbol. In both instances, we get the number 46. Okay? So you're probably thinking, why do this? Why pass by pointer? Um, that's stupid. It just overcomplicates it. And I have built a function here just to show you why. When you pass numbers by value, so we've been dealing with just simple variables like this, where we have some num assigned to 46. If we were to pass this to a function sum num, and all sum num does is it adds one to it. So I've defined it down here so you can see. It takes in a number and just adds one to that number and then prints it out to screen so you can see. When we run this function, it's going to pass at the number 46. It's going to print out 46 before it goes in. It's going to print out 47 once it goes in. And then after it comes out, that number, we'll see what it is. We'll see if this sum num is 46 or we'll see if it's 47. Okay? Before it goes in, again, sum num is 46, as we said. It gets inside that function, adds 1 to it. It's 47 now inside that function. But once that function's done, once it leaves that final bracket of that function, it is no longer 47 because that was a copy. Sum num was always 46. It only passed this a copy. So if we want to actually have our functions make a difference on what we pass them, we need to use pointers. We need to say, hey, at this address, the integer that resides there, make sure you add 1 to it. And so we just need to make simple changes to our functions to account for pointers instead of passing by value. So we will pass by reference, we will pass by address, those two are synonymous, address and reference, instead of passing by value. All right, so let's make the changes to our function in order to account for passing by reference. Now, if you remember in past lessons, we needed to pass the address of instead of passing the variable. So we will pass the address with the ampersand of some number to this function. And then our function definition, we just make some simple changes. We add the star in between the data type and the name of it. And so this says now that instead of accepting a variable that is an integer, it accepts a pointer variable that holds an integer address. And in order to change the value of the number that is in that address, we need to use the dereference symbol, which is again the star. So here we're saying the value that n points to make that equal to the value that's already in there. So we're using the star again, this time to read from it. So we're saying look up the value that's in there, which should be 46, add 1 to it, and assign that to the value that's at the address that is pointed to in the pointer. Kind of convoluted, but I promise you it's going to work. And when we print this out inside the function now, we'll need to use the star again. So we're saying print out the value that this points to. And so now, finally, we should be able to add 1 to some num with our function. So let's go ahead and build and run it. And so here we have our function. It was 46 before it went in. It went in there, it added 1. And then when it came out, it actually had added 1 to our variable, our original variable. And as you can see later on, we printed out a few more times, it stays 47. So that actually worked. And this is why you would use pointers, is because if you want your functions to actually affect your objects that you have in your program, you need to use, you need to pass them by reference. You need to pass them by address. Another reason you would use pointers is because it's more efficient. Um, every time you're making a copy, you're doubling the size reserved on the computer for that variable, so it's more efficient overall as far as memory goes. 
and it's faster as well. So on to vectors. Vectors are just like arrays, but they're a more modern version of arrays, if I just had to simply explain it. Uh, you can just think of it as a collection of items, and you know, in this case we're going to use integers because integers are always easy, but you can put in you know, your classes, your, your custom-made classes that you create. Um, you can have a vector full of anything you can think of. The great thing about vectors are that they come with a lot of functions pre-built in in the standard library. So, you know, with your array, you can think in your mind, you would often have to like access and know all the time where your iterators were and stuff like that. With the vector, you don't need to remember that stuff. You just have pre-built in functions that you can call to add and remove stuff from your vector. So this allows us to maintain a list very easily. Um, in our project that we're going to build here, it's going to be how we keep a hold of our shopping cart as well as we keep a hold of our inventory of all of our items that we have in our store. So it's just a great way to access, remove, add to a collection of items that you want to keep track of. So in this simple tutorial, I've just uh, kind of brought a few functions in that you can like add and remove stuff to your vectors and I've created a function here where we're just going to print out what's in it so you can see but if you want to see the full list of functions for vectors and there's like 25 of them uh, I have included a link below on this page at our website at makethingswithcpp.com um, that will take you to the complete list of all the functions in the standard library that you can use with your vector so in our example here we have our vector of integers, it's called gaggle of ints. We're just going to add five numbers to it, print those out so you can see that all five got added to it. Now if you can imagine this as an array, it's always going to add it to the end when you push back. So it's going to put it on the end always of that array. It's just going to keep going, going, going. There are functions where you can add it in the middle. Again, that will be in that link that I provided, but this is just how you would add it to the end. So we'll add five to the end print it out. I'll pop off that very last one using pop back. We'll print it out again. Then you'll just see these four numbers. And then I will remove the second number. So this will remove 56 with the erase function. So again, like arrays, vectors are zero indexed. The very first item is going to be zero. The second item will be one, two, three, four. And so that's why I said gaggle events at the beginning plus one so remove 56 so let's go ahead and print this out just to make sure everything works as expected alright so with our pushback function as you can see the numbers were put in order and I've just printed them out so you can see again it's in zero indexed first number 23 all the way through 89 and then I popped off with pop back the very last number so 89 got popped off and then finally, with our erase function, I said to erase the second number, which was 56, and that worked nice and simple. So those are vectors, and we are going to use them pretty heavily in all of our programming from here on. Um, again, it's just whenever we need to keep a collection of some sort of item, these are so handy, it's almost impossible not to use them. Um, I use them all the time. They're probably my favorite feature in C++. So now we're ready to start building our shopping cart, our, our pr inventory program. We can start creating products with the stuff that we learned today, these pointers, these vectors. Let's go ahead and jump right in. For deeper learning on C++, visit us at makethingswithcpp.com and be sure to like and subscribe.